In this video, we're going to take our first look at work, and we're going to stay in one dimension. Work occurs when a force acts on an object that is moving. Now, this is necessary. There must be a force, and there must be an object that is moving, but it is not sufficient. When we move into two dimensions, we'll find some other conditions, but these two things must be there. There has to be a force, and there has to be a moving object. Work requires an object. That means every question about work requires the phrase, work on the object. For example, if you're lifting a book, there's the work on the book. If a ball is falling, there is a work on the ball. Never get caught up into generic phrases about doing work. There has to be doing work on an object. This is a source of many trick questions that physics teachers say. So you're holding a book at rest, or you're pushing against a wall. Is the person doing work? Well, on what? Yes, the person is doing work. Holding a book or pushing against a wall takes energy. You'll eventually get tired. But is the person doing work on the book? Is the book moving? No. Then no. Is the wall moving? No. So is the person doing work on the wall? No. So always be careful when you're dealing with work and make sure you know and can identify the object that the work is being done on. Work adds or removes energy from the object. If the work is positive, greater than zero, then it's adding energy. And that also corresponds to when the force is in the same direction as the velocity. If the work is negative, that means it removes energy. And that also corresponds to the force being in the opposite direction of the velocity. Note that in one dimension, the force can only ever be in the same direction or opposite direction. Let's take a look at a video where a book slides across the room. So in that first step where the person is throwing the book, the person is exerting a force on the book. In fact, that force is in the same direction as velocity, and so that force is adding energy to the book. Eventually, the book is sliding, and when it's sliding, the force is in the opposite direction of the velocity. And so that force, which we know as friction, is removing energy from the book. Finally, always distinguish between work done by one force and the total work or net work done on an object. The total work is the work done by all the forces on the object, or the work done by the net force on the object. Let's say a person is lifting a book up. Now, if we were to do a free body diagram, there are two forces on this object. The gravitational force and this force due to the hand, the contact force. The contact force due to the hand leads to an amount of work done on the object. That's going to be greater than zero since the force is in the same direction as the velocity. The force due to gravity also does work on the object. The work that it does will be negative since it's pointing in the opposite direction of the velocity. And so the total work, or net work, will then be the sum of the work done by the individual forces. Another way to do this is that you can find the total force or net force, which is the vector sum of the contact force of the hand and the gravitational force, and then find the work done by that net force. And that will also give you the total or net work on the system. Now we just need to know how to calculate that work, and that comes up next.